Hey, hello everyone. So in this video, now we are going to now finally start discussing Rousseau's texts, right? But before we get to the discourse on the origin and foundation of inequality amongst men, uh, let's just discuss this previous text, excuse me, the one for which he became famous really. So this was the discourse on the science and the arts, um, which he wrote in 1750, uh, as part of this essay competition from the um, Académie de Dijon, where they had posed a question, uh, which was uh, whether the restoration of the science and the arts has contributed to the purification of morals, right? So this was a question, uh, very enlightenment sort of a question, which basically is like, have the sciences and the arts and the restoration. So, you know, the retablismo is, is the idea that, you know, it, it, had, it had gone out of the window. I, mean, I think that's exaggerating it a bit, but okay. Uh, but, you know, bringing it back into prominence, you know, such prominence, has it made people more moral? Is there a direct correlation between, um, you know, science and culture and arts and um, morality and ethics? You know, uh, as 21st century people now, we are now having lived through the 20th century and the current century, we'll be like, mm, 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 no, 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 no. I mean, you know, <laughs> more technology is leading to like a greater disaster. But like for somebody writing in 1750, this would be really going against the grain to, to say something of the sort, because, you know, everybody was like, yay, sciences, yay, arts, you know, this is, this is the future, this is everything. And this is what makes us human truly, you know? So, so um, here you have that, and then you have this grumpy Russo come in the middle and says, no, 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 no purification. Actually, what the sciences and arts have done, they have corrupted morals, right? They have corrupted human beings. Science is like, you know, injurious, it's ruinous to all humanity. Uh, in fact, you know, whatever you call progress is just illusion, you know, there is no such thing as progress. And, um, you know, the science and arts and cultures, you know, it, it, they neither bring you virtue, nor do they bring you happiness. You know, these are the two sort of the stoic ideas, you know, like two things that you, you would want um, and, and can't, for example, in his critique of practical reason, sort of talks about the sum and bonum, the sum of all goods, which is virtue and happiness, if you have both great. So Rousseau, and previously from Kant, obviously, is like, no, nope, they bring you neither, you know, uh, virtue nor happiness, and they contribute neither to your morals nor to your happiness. Uh, in fact, um, sophistication and, you know, morality, the way he describes it, are inversely proportional, right? So the more you have uh, sophistication, the more sophisticated the people in society, the more corrupt uh, the society, right? So sophistication, he correlates to corruption. Um, and so what he's basically doing is that he's making a proper attack, like a sustained attack on all the values of enlightenment that we talked about in the previous video. And on the age of reason, like, you know, this idea that reason will make us better people, you're like, mm -mm, reason is actually making everything worse, right? So so this is, this is the kind of um, text that he wrote and it's really surprising that it took off, you know, and amongst really the encyclopedists, the, you know, Diderot and, and Voltaire and, well, I think Voltaire did criticize him quite a lot. I, I'm not sure they got along very well, but Diderot, you know, uh, did. And he's the one who promoted Rousseau quite a lot. And uh, so, so again, here with with um, with Diderot, it's it's uh, um, it's it's maybe he found it amusing, you know. So so the the idea of um, uh, Rousseau basically saying, you know, everything you do is rubbish, right? But interestingly, you know, we have looked at the history of like Rousseau himself, and as I said, he was a writer of all kinds of texts, you know, he wrote, you know, novels and plays and you know, the first big major autobiographers, uh, literary essays, uh, even his political and philosophical texts are, you know, literary texts in some ways. Um, he, was a, uh, he was a composer, he composed music, he composed poems, uh, he, uh, in fact, he wrote an opera which became extremely popular. Uh, so, you know, all these things and you know he's saying sciences and arts are rubbish you know he's still doing he's still practicing them so what does he say so this is from the preface of narcissus and i, I put the whole quote there i know it's taking up space on the slide which i don't like to do but i really wanted you to have this quote 
So he says, so people obviously, you know, pointed it out even then, like we are pointing it out now. So he says, I, I advise those who are so eager. Uh, oh yeah, I'll, I'll correct the text out there to find reasons to reproach me to be prepared to study my principles and to observe my conduct more carefully before they tax them with contradiction and incoherence. If they notice that the love of reputation causes me to forget the love of virtue, I beg them to warn me, even publicly, and I promise instantly to commit my writings and my books to the flames, you know, like so dramatic, and to concede all the errors they may wish to reproach me with. In the meantime, you know, he's completely unapologetic, Right, he says, I shall write books, I shall compose poems and music. If I have the talent and the time, the strength and the will to do so, I shall continue to state, nevertheless, openly the bad opinion in, in which I hold letters and those who practice them, right? So both sides fit. I, I will myself be a man of letters, but I will also, you know, badmouth all everybody else who is a man of letters. Uh, and believe that I'm not worth any the less for it. Yeah, but I still think that I'm good. You know, so he, he lives this contradiction. There's, 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 this is what I find so fascinating about Rousseau that he, he knows that sometimes the thing that he's saying uh, to anybody out, uh, anybody who's listening to it would be like, hmm, incoherent, you know, like contradiction. But he says, well, I'm well aware of it and I don't see it. I mean, if there's a contradiction, the contradiction is not there in, you know, as far as I can, I, I, as far as I'm concerned, right? True, he says, people may someday say this avowed enemy of the sciences and arts nevertheless wrote and published plays. And I admit that the remark will be a most bitter satire, but a satire, he says, not on me, but on my century. Yeah, this is a time of contradictions. And, 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 and this is what, I mean, is, he's bringing forward that this is the age in which, you know, you are uh, in which he finds himself co compelled and, and he's such a beautiful stylist, you know, he, he finds himself compelled to, to write, to compose. And um, this is the way he expresses himself. But at the same time, he sees the, uh, the dangers, really, right? And, and he is aware enough of them to be critical, right? So, uh, anyway, I will not go into detail of um, the discourse of the science and arts. It's it's a beautiful text. I think you you enjoy reading it. Well, you will, might disagree with a lot of what he says out there because he's growing against the grain means that he he is a bit harsh. Uh, but yeah, it's it's a, it's a wonderful text. Right. Uh, I suppose I can continue on in the same video with the second discourse. So in. 1750 when he won this award then he was like okay let me try another of these and here the question was what is the origin of inequality among men and whether it is authorized by the natural law yeah very sort of like um, like the previous question again you know like a, a question in which um, there is there is a uh, a strong, uh, there, there are many controversial arguments that can come together. And this text by Rousseau is, is it's just amazing. I mean, and which is why yeah, I have prescribed this to you out of all the texts from him that I could have chosen. You know, it was a difficult sort of, it was not a very difficult choice actually. It could have been, I wanted to give more. So, you know, that was the only problem. But if, if asked to choose, you know, this is the one I'd pick up. Um, this one did not win a prize. And it was, I think, double the length of what he was supposed to write. So I, I probably just disqualified because of that. But also, uh, it's, um, yeah, I mean, the first one is on your face controversial, but this one is more deeply uh, radical uh, as a text. And you'll see, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you, by now you, you all have already read the text, you know, or, you know, I'm eternally hopeful that you have. Um, but um, yeah, you'll see uh, why and how uh, we get there. So yeah, um, okay, maybe I'll make another video so that you know when we, we, we start with this text, uh, you have your own, uh, you, you have a new video to turn to, yeah?